to my channel and my final day of my Ireland holiday. I'm in Drogheda today, my final day, and tonight I have to fly back to London from Dublin International Airport. So I've got a few hours to spend here before I have to decide how I get back to the airport. Do I go back to Connolly on the train and then catch the bus, the Dublin Express, up to uh, the airport? Or do I catch the coach from here, direct to the airport? I have a few choices, depending on how I get on today and how much time I have. Uh, I shall end the video at the Butter Gate, which is an old ruined gate, down by the um, Millmont Tower, where I was yesterday. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And along the way, we'll see what else we can discover about the history of Drahida. And uh, I had a little walk through the town this morning. It really is absolutely beautiful, this town, steeped in history. I'm going to start at an archway called the Balls Grove Arch, which is just ahead. This is rather an impressive archway. Uh, it was erected in 1801 by a man called George Ball, who was one time High Sheriff of the County of Louth. And he did this to make a, a visual statement uh, to the entrance to the Balls Grove estate, uh, which I think he once owned. But it's rather pleasant walking up here, a little tree-lined uh, pathway, very pleasant indeed. But let's head on into town and see what else we can discover about the history of Drahida. It was interesting to look at that arch. Not a lot to see there, but architecturally it was rather, rather pleasing. And so is the weather today as well. Did enough rain yesterday morning. I got a bit wet. Don't like the rain, but the weather's fine for today. So I'm hoping it, it will actually, um, the forecast is correct for today. And the rain holds off. But this is the road bridge that goes over the River Boyne. And there's a nice uh, ruined mill on the left hand side. I do like looking at ruined industrial buildings. There's also another ruin on the other side of the bridge, which I think is the old priory. So let's go and take a look at that and discover some more of the history of Drahida. so many empty shops down there. There's another one on the right hand side here as well. This is beginning to become a, a trait in high streets. Where we've got a lot of uh, empty shops in England. People just, businesses just can't afford the rents anymore. Especially with the, uh, the cost of living. I dare say it must be the same here in Ireland. Quite shame that uh, What once viable businesses are no longer there and no one can afford to take over the, the empty shops. But this is the, uh, the old Priory. This dates from uh, 1206. Uh, there's a plaque on the wall here. Let's have a look at that and see what that says. Uh, St Mary's Priory is said to have had its origins about the time of St Patrick, who baptised the townspeople at a well nearby, back in the year 433. In the 12th century, a synod was held here at which archbishops were appointed for Amar, Dublin, Tuam and Cashel. Later, Augustinian friaries established a hospital for the support of the sick and the infirm. It's rather interesting. Now a little ruin here. Nice little archway and uh, 
out the back must have been another part of the uh, of the priory. Let's take a little walk up here. Isn't just uh, little bits of wall that remains, and the remains perhaps of an old chapel as well. Oh, and a rather impressive mural on the wall as well, obviously for the gallery. But yeah. Not a lot here, but it's still very interesting to see it. Um, but it's nice that it has survived and it has been preserved. And this is no longer a, really a commercial thoroughfare, but... Yeah, very nice, very nice to see it. But let's head on into the town, walk down West Street a little further and see what else we can discover on the way up to the Buttergate. Just down from the crossroads at uh, West Street is Shop Street and this fabulous Augustinian church. The current church was built in 1866, replacing an earlier building that was built in 1780. The Augustinians arro arrived in Drogheda back in 1295 and during the troubles of uh, 1649 Oliver Cromwell's men killed Father Peter Tafosa who was uh, the priest here. What I've come to look at is the, uh, the monument, or the, the, the picture on the wall just here because it's rather interesting and it's to the Taylor brothers. Master Julian pipe maker William Billy Taylor is regarded by many as the greatest pipe maker of his time. He lived in Drogheda first in Pitcher Hill and then later um, in Scarlet Street. In 1872 he emigrated to the United States with his stepbrother Charles and the the brothers um, set up business in um, Philadelphia where Billy famously remodelled the Julian pipes into a compact and substantial instrument with a powerful tone which blended quite nicely with the violin and piano. Uh, the renowned Billy actually died in, uh, in 1901 and Charlie the year later and uh, this is rather a, a splendid um, um, mural to, to, to them. It really is um, it's quite nice. And it shows, the, uh, shows Billy holding his, uh, his Julian pipes. Really, um, really nice to see um, murals uh, depicting local people who have done well, especially in the arts and uh, someone who's as crafted as, 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 uh, as Billy was. Absolutely wonderful to see. But just around the corner it's rather an interesting set of steps. Just on the left here are the High Lane steps. There's 23 of them. And they go, they, and they go up to, uh, to Lawrence Street. Lawrence Street joins up with the crossroads at West Street, where I've just come from, and the uh, Lawrence Gate at the other end. And it's quite nice actually, yeah? The building on the right is uh, what remains of the old 15th century uh, Franciscan Priory that used to be here. But now it's the, uh, the High Lanes Art Gallery and that was uh, remodelled uh, back in 1829. Just at the top of the steps is the, is the gallery. There we go. And what a beautiful looking building it is. And a lovely seating area out here as well. Even though the building was remodeled back in 1829 and reopened as a church, it's been a thriving congregation here up until about the year 2000, when the uh, building closed for uh, regular worship. The building was uh, donated to the, uh, the people of Drogheda. And in 2006, it opened as an art gallery. So let's go inside and take a look. What a 
a beautiful little art gallery in there. Such a fantastic array of, uh, of paintings and artworks um, on varying different subjects. Really delightful and well worth a visit, should you happen to visit Trujillo. I'd like to see the, uh, the stained glass windows in there as well. It was rather nice. And so was their cafe. Lovely slice of cake and a cup of tea. Six euros fifty. Just what I needed at that time. Absolutely lovely. Now let's head on and uh, cross the other side of the River Boyne and find the Buttergate. <laughs> Buttergate, or what remains of it. It's only really a part of the wall which actually remains. The actual gatehouse is just behind the wall. Uh, it's actually a 13th century uh, Norman structure and uh, what remains here is left over from the, uh, the bombings during March of 1922. That was the um, uh, Irish Civil War. I've had a look around the back of the wall and it's quite impassable. Um, I had to go a little way in and then met a large wall and I couldn't really climb up it. It's just too much and I'd hate to have an accident um, and break my leg or something so I didn't go any further. But this is where I end this video. I will leave you with some pictures of the Buttergate and the wall. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow my journey because there'll be another adventure very 